In part one, we decided to float in the mind, the mastermind of Lawrence Leck and find out about his work and an alternative future when it comes to the virtual world. We're now joined by a collaborator and friend of his, Dr. Joni Zhu. How did you meet Lawrence? We met in 2015. Something I think we shared is maybe a slight rebellious within our pursuits. We kind of work as each other's soundboard as well. One thing that's very tangible is you share the same way of talking about things. Not necessarily the same language, but you get the vibe of what you're trying to communicate. Lawrence's work, it's about overthrowing a dominant view on AI or overthrowing a dominant kind of narrative that is posed by the West. And do you enjoy it? Do you have a laugh? Yeah, we have, we have loads of laughs. <laughs> <laughs> we work together, we do all sorts of things together too, so it's not just a working relationship. Dr. Joni, Lawrence, what have we got to look forward to? I always think about this quote that Lawrence also knows very well is uh, William Gibson's quote about the future, that the future is already here, it's just not very evenly distributed. So it's the question that William Gibson posed at that time that how future for some is different for future for other people. And we need to think about that there is just not one dominant future or there is not one mono future. Like Joni is saying, I'm more interested in parallel versions of what might happen. The William Gibson quote is also suggesting that with all of these parallel strands of you know, timelines and futures that emerge, no one person will ever experience all of them. You know, that's just not possible. My kind of practice in art and research sometimes is just posing some of these questions to imagine more of these different singular possible futures. Joni's own PhD thesis was about looking at this idea of what's called the cyber proletariat. What is the cyber proletariat? It's a social class that work within the cybernetic capital. But these workers within these cluster does not think that there are a class. That would be people who work as a content moderator for a social media, or they would be factory workers putting iPhones together, or they would be the artificial intelligence who is doing 24-7 calculating for us. So it's kind of a body of work which is really going along with people's changing perception and their understanding of class. For me, just reflecting on this conversation, just the fact that like Joni and I can say like, Cyber proletariat and sino futurism in the same sentence. Cyber proletariat. It's like seven syllable words. That's that's pretty nerdy, I guess. We've got some questions from our audience. This is from Patorti. Some people fear a future with sentient AI. Does this fear help or hinder us? A lot of you know people invested in uh, developing safety mechanisms to make sure cars don't crash, for example. So it obviously makes sense that they're trying to develop systems to make sure that AIs don't turn bad. A lot of the fear is more coming from a sense of potential guilt, as if humanity somehow expects punishment for things that they have done wrong. Fear comes from human worries to be replaced or to be overtaken by the AI. We worry that our position on the Earth will be overtaken by other beings. What is reality? What is fantasy? What is created by the masterminds such as Dr. Joni and Lawrence? I'm still unsure, but my mind has been on a wonderful odyssey via talking to them as part of art and technology. We'll be back next time, delving into more excellent thinkers' brains, and I, for one, can't wait. Hyundai Motor, connecting art and technology.